this is this is a good um, transition into this Andrew Tate guy. I didn't know a whole lot about this guy. <laughs> He's in police custody. Um, he has been accused of trafficking and exploiting women. And I mean, there are countless videos. Yeah. Lots yeah. of so, evidence of him admitting to it. Right. For, for those that don't know, internet influencer Andrew Tate became the center of the internet manosphere for, I guess, his 15 minutes of fame before his online cancellation and later arrest in Romania, where authorities are still attempting to gather evidence for potential human trafficking charges, despite holding him in a cell for over three months. Um, the, the controversy of the accusations against Tate aside, do you think that Andrew Tate is a symptom of internet defined toxic masculinity or is he just a response to feminists and liberals who have attempted to basically emasculate men at all costs? You know, I think that he's a little bit of both because mm -hmm. I don't think you would have an Andrew Tate if you didn't have such extreme toxic femininity, which, you know, certain men see, I think there are two routes. Mm -hmm. You either have men that go down the incel route where they completely remove themselves from women and they want nothing to do with women or you have men like tate who are you know they do genuinely see women as objects mm -hmm. and um it's it's actually interesting i was doing an interview recently with um if you're familiar with him raw egg nationalist yeah yeah he's yeah fine. he said something really interesting about um andrew tate which is um basically you know, for all of Tate's talk about escaping the matrix, he's very captive to the matrix. Um, he's not just someone who's persecuted. He's not a neo-like figure. He's not going to be bringing down the system. Um, he's just a caricature. Yeah. And no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't give people like him too much more of a platform. Mm -hmm. But it is important to talk about people like Tate because there is a segment of men who really see that sort of thing and they resonate with his message. Yeah. I think there's a correlation there between guys like that and even uh, Jordan Peterson, mm -hmm. um, who, who I like in a lot of ways. I, I've seen him speak. Um, I disagree with him on certain things, obviously, like his um, strange suits and uh, shoe wear. But uh, <laughs> the two-tone suit yeah uh, yeah it's just i'd rather you know i'm just I'm, I'm i'm just not feeling it i don't get it but uh, i find it fascinating <laughs> it, it definitely is that it definitely is that he's very he's very eccentric but i think there's a correlation there between these two kind of characters and i just think to myself um is there that many absent dads and strong masculine role models out there for uh young boys and young men i certainly had my dad, um, who was one, and my grandfather, both um, veterans. Um, my dad, Vietnam. My grandfather, of World War II, Battle of the Bulge. Um, mm. A lot of their heroes became my heroes just through sort of osmosis. You know, whether it's Audie Murphy or Carol Shelby or Chuck Yeager. Um, these are guys they would talk about, obviously. But I just yeah. think to myself, you know, where are those men in today's society um, – and, and, and why aren't they helping, um, y you know, young men today find those types of archetypes and heroes and people to look up to? It's, it's strange. Well, there's also just a lack of spaces for men to be men in or mm -hmm. for boys to be boys in. For instance, Boy Scouts becoming integrated with females. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can't have your young boys who just are surrounded by other young boys learning scouting and have looking up to their scoutmaster. Mm -hmm. You don't have the same sort of fraternal organizations that you used to have. Um, you know, some of them have fallen by the wayside and you know what whether you believe that they were secretive societies or not, um, destructive societies. I what's most important is that they were a space for men to be creative with one another, mm -hmm. to express themselves, and to not feel like they had to censor themselves or act differently to try to impress women. Having a space for men is so vital. And, you know, you see how women are, even to this day, legally given spaces where they can just be women. I think it was um, 
in the whole gym discussion where women only gyms can be a thing, but why like that has legal protection to it. Why is it that men can't have male only gyms? Honestly, it's a genuine question. 